My name is Mark Walsh from Integration Training. These are my top 10 communication tips. So communication is massively important. Um, in most jobs today, we're actually paid to communicate one way or another. And all these tips apply to emails, phone, uh, and face-to-face -face conversations and meetings. So it's really the essence of what we do at work. And just in life, we're, we're social animals. So communication is um, massively important for our health, our happiness, and, and our well-being. So I work a lot with communication in stress, leadership, team development, coaching, um, conflict resolution all, all over the world. And uh, here are a few general rules of thumb. None of them are hard and fast, but these are the things that I've found uh, will, will help communication as a general rule. So number one, listen first. So listening um, is massively important to communication. And if you remember just one, I'd remember this one. There's a video we have on what is empathy, if you'd like to look at it some more. It's really that intention to connect in the present moment. So really being present to the person you're with and listening to them. Number two, breathe. So when a lot of people communicate, uh, particularly if it's something stressful, or some difficult situation, perhaps a speech or an appraisal at work, then people often get tense and they forget to breathe so they don't come across as well as they might. So take a deep belly breath. <sighs> Nice and slow and relaxed before you say what you need to say. Number three, say I. So by saying I, you what we call own the communication. You say, I think this, I feel this. So it's really coming from you and that's clear rather than saying one or it or not being clear in that way. So as a general rule, using I statements is, is useful for communication. Number four, avoid judgment, blame and denial of responsibility. So this is something I've got from Marshall Rosenberg of Nonviolent Communication. If you blame or judge people, then they don't like it. We all do it, it's very human, and it gets in the way of effective communication. Equally, denial of responsibility. People turn up for a meeting late and they'll say, ah, sorry I was late, there was traffic, you know, it's not my fault. Rather than, okay, I was late, and the reason was, well, I didn't really leave enough time or I didn't check the traffic. So really owning your communication, having responsibility uh, can help. Number five, separate facts from opinions. The basis of a good conversation is often the facts. We often start with the facts. Let's say you're giving an appraisal, you can say, uh, John, um, you know, you've been more than 15 minutes late for the last three days. And that's quite different from jumping to an opinion or an evaluation and saying, well, you're lazy or um, you're sloppy. So really it connects, as you can see, to judgment and blame, but starting with, with some clear observations that the other person can connect with as well. Number six, be aware of emotions. So emotions are a key part of being human. They're part of how we communicate. Often that's what we're communicating, is, is our feelings, our emotions, and emotional intelligence is, is really important in the workplace. Seven, be aware of needs and values. So underpinning our emotions are our needs. So for example, I might feel happy because my need for consideration was met. Or I might feel sad or angry because my need for respect or dignity wasn't met. The beautiful thing about needs is that we all have them. They're completely universal. If you can connect with someone on that level, you can really see um, how they're similar to you. It can really help with the connection. Um, values is, is similarly another way of talking, talking about it. So I highly recommend connecting to needs and values in any kind of difficult communication. Number eight, ask for what you want. So by asking for what you want, you're more likely to get it. it sounds like common sense and a lot of people don't do it. Asking specifically and in the positive. So would you open a window now? Or rather than, I'm hot in here, yeah? Or instead of, uh, oh, I wish you'd love me more, would you be willing to give me a hug? So the specific thing that would meet your needs. Number nine, body language. So the body is really integral to communication. Uh, we communicate for our bodies as much as our words. If I say something without moving my face or expressions or body, it's much less engaging than when my body's really involved in the communication. We work a lot with this area of integration training, something called embodied leadership. There are videos of that. And um, what I'd say for now is just being aware of the body is what's important. Not so much uh, learning some tricks or gestures, but just paying some attention to your body while you're communicating.
Number 10, last but not least, is taking account of the individual and cultural differences. So we're all different. Some people are extrovert, some introvert, some are more thinking, some more feeling orientated. So you might talk to those people quite differently. Similarly with uh, culture, cultures are different. They have different cultural ways of communicating. So for example, when I'm uh, teaching in the Netherlands, I might be much more direct than if I'm working with Japanese people who prefer a different approach. So taking the individual and cultural differences into account is, is really important. So I'll go through those again, the top 10. I hope I've communicated them to you effectively. Um, number one, listen. Number two, breathe. Number three, say I. Number four, avoid judgment, blame, and denial of responsibility. Number five, separate facts from opinions. Number six, be aware of emotions. Number seven, be aware of needs and values. Number eight, ask for what you want. Number nine, be aware of body language. And number 10, be aware of individual and cultural differences. So I hope these have been of some use. Um, feel free to comment. I'd love to have your questions. I'd love to engage in the dialogue about this. Uh, if you want support individually, then coaching is available. If you'd like organisational support, workshops on difficult behaviour or appraisals or leadership, then please get in touch. It's mark at integrationtraining.k.uk, www.integrationtraining.k.uk. Thank you. So Lucy, how do you think that went? I mean, in this communications thing and yeah, yeah, I, I know, I, I think, you know, you were green, you were good. It was, it was, it was really good and uh, yeah, it was okay, wasn't it? It, was, it went pretty well. Well, I hope they like it and um, yeah, no, you're looking good today, Lucy, nice and green and um, yeah, if you need more water, just ask, okay? It's really, really appreciate your help on that one. Thanks.